What is up, y'all? This is Andy with Poster Grind, your neighborhood art director that designs movie posters for a living. Today, I'm excited to share this technique with you on how to create a stipple graphic effect on your images. I'm super stoked because I've seen, a, I've seen a few other videos out there and those videos are super complicated and have multiple steps. I've basically narrowed it down and tried to simplify this as much as possible. Now, definitely take your notes and be sure to stay towards the end because I show you how to add a background using a gradient as well as how to properly color your graphics. Now, without further ado, let's dive on in. <laughs> What? All right, today's template is going to be 20 inches wide, 13.5 inches high, and a resolution of 150. However, I do want to mention we will be going back and forth with our resolution to get a better stipple effect. The first thing you're going to want to do is to pick out a cool image that you want to work with. I found this image over at Envato.com, which happens to be an amazing stock photography website that a lot of professional graphic designers use. They have a very affordable monthly subscription of around 16 bucks and about 200 bucks for the year, and that's unlimited downloads of their licensed photography. Definitely use our affiliate link below if you get a chance. As soon as you have your cool image to work with, go ahead and mask it out. I've already done so, so this one is ready to go. The next move you're gonna wanna do once you have your image masked out is to right click and convert it to a smart object. From here, go ahead and press Command U on your keyboard to bring up hue saturation. All we're gonna do is drop the saturation to zero to make our image black and white. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is mess with the curves and create more contrast. To do that, all you have to do is hit Command M and that's going to bring up your curves. Once you're in curves, go ahead and create an S curve to create more contrast. Then hit OK. Now what we want to do is basically smooth out the photo so that the effect works better. And to do that, we're just going to go up to Filter, Blur, Surface Blur. And then we can just kind of blur the surface. I'm going to do 10 pixels with a threshold of 25 levels. Hit OK. Once you have all of that done, we're going to need to change the resolution on our image. So we're going to go up to image, image size, and then on the resolution, pixels per inch, we're going to drop that all the way down to 40. Once you have that, hit OK. Now we're going to have to zoom in by hitting Command Plus. And as you can see, our image is already, already has less resolution, which is what we want. The next move is to go and work with our filter gallery to get the stipple effect rocking. Before you do so, make sure you hit D on your keyboard to clear your foreground and background colors. We want our foreground color to be black. Now go up to filter, filter gallery. And then if you need to zoom in, just go ahead and hit command plus. And now look for your texture folder. And then once you find your texture folder, go to grain. Then once you're in grain, go to grain type and look for stipled. Now all these other grain types are cool, but they're not going to give us the effect we're looking for. So make sure you're on stipled. Now you can play with the intensity and look for something that works for your particular graphic. I'm gonna go with 38 and then a contrast of 23 like Michael Jordan. Then once you're happy, hit OK. Now, if you guys have learned anything up until this point, please subscribe now and hit that like button. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Now, this is cool and all, but I want to show you guys one other cool thing you can do to get some stipple texture going. I want that new texture to basically fill in all of our highlights, which don't have any stipple effect rocking. To do that, let's go to our adjustment layer, solid color, and then make sure you're on white, hit OK, right click on that layer, go to convert to smart object, and then once again, we're gonna go to filter, filter gallery, zoom in, and then we're gonna use the same grain texture, keeping everything on stipled, and then now mess around with the intensity. And you can increase this until you get a texture to work. So for this, I'm gonna use an intensity of 53, and the contrast isn't gonna really do anything, so that doesn't matter. 
Now hit OK. And from here, we're basically going to attach this to our image by using a clipping mask. So go ahead and hit Option, Command G, and that's going to attach it to our graphic. But that looks horrible. What we need to do now is just change the blending mode. So our blending mode is gonna go from normal to darken. And like that, we have a lot of those highlights filled in with the stipple. Now I'm gonna show you a really cool way to create a gradient stipple effect for the background, or you can use it in other aspects of your design. So before we do, I'm gonna to go to our background layer. I'm just gonna turn this to black. Now I'm gonna to go to our adjustment layers, gradient, and that's gonna create our gradient fill. Now be sure that your gradient fill has a stop of black going to clear. Once you have that, hit OK. Make sure the angle is at 90. Hit OK once again, and now we should be good to go. You can toggle your background on and off to see that gradient. Now on that gradient fill, I'm gonna right click, convert to smart object. And then once again, we're gonna go back up to filter, filter gallery. So once we're in here, I'm just going to keep our intensity at 38 and the contrast at 23 and hit OK. And like that, we have this really cool background. Now let's go ahead and activate our black background so you can kind of see what we just did. And from there, we already have this awesome graphic design effect. Now let's say you wanna add some typography. Let's go to our topmost layer, hit new layer, hit T on your keyboard, and then type out something. I'm gonna make sure that our type is in white. So now I'm gonna hit Command T, size up that typography, put that behind our image. As soon as you have your type where you want it, go ahead and double click on that layer to bring up layer styles. And from here, we can have some of that stipple come through on that typography. So be sure to hold down your option key and drag the black slider to the right. And then hit OK. And now you can kind of put your type where you want it and it has a kind of cool faded effect. The next move we got to do is essentially merge all of our layers onto a new layer. To do that, let's go to new layer and then use the hotkeys, shift, option, command, E on your keyboard, and that's gonna basically take a snapshot of everything we just created. Now let's convert that to a smart object by right-clicking Convert to Smart Object. From here, let's go ahead and blend this together by going to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And then from here, we're just gonna do a subtle blur of 0.3 pixels, then hit OK. Now we have this cool graphic and you can either drop this into a different template that you're creating with, or let's go back up to image, image size, and then we're going to create a 150 resolution, hit OK. Then we're gonna zoom out, and now that's gonna keep our pixelated stipled effect the way we want it. And you can turn that layer on and off to see the difference, so this is a 150 pixel per inch stipple effect, which really doesn't look as good as what we just did at 40. Now the icing on the cake for this project is to make sure that you colorize it properly. So we're gonna go to solid color adjustment layer, and then we can go to whatever color you want, hit okay. But we need to turn this blending mode on to either darken or multiply. So I'm gonna put it on darken, and then I'm gonna go back into the colors and change it to something that I like. A lot of this aesthetic has desaturated color combinations, either purple, reds, greens, or even yellows. So there you go, guys. I hope you liked this video. I hope you use this in the real world, and I hope you hit the like button on your way out. I look forward to seeing you all on the next video. Thanks so much for watching.